I was a rabbi in Columbus, Ohio, <laughs> and I got a book in the mail called Standing with Israel, Why Christians Stand with Israel. Everything that I'm doing now is really thanks to uh, your book. I think it's right behind you, Standing with Israel. <laughs> it was my interactions with Christians living in Pennsylvania that planted in me the curiosity to want to figure out why do so many of these Christians profess such heartfelt support for Israel and the Jewish people? And as you know, the typical response from our community was one of dismissal and skepticism. I was determined to, to, to get to the facts and figure out why do these Christians support Israel? And it's not the, the prophecies of the book of Revelation, it's the promises in the book of Genesis. And I think right. one promise above all, uh, Genesis 12, 3, he who blesses Israel will be blessed and he who curses Israel will be cursed. So, Hey, it's Rachel today on Crack Your Bible. We are in Genesis 12 and we are going to be talking about the two most misapplied verses in the Bible that affect American foreign policy today. Those who bless Israel will be blessed and those who curse Israel will be cursed. Have you heard that? Yes or no? We know that American churches will take this out of context and they will say, okay, well, if you are cursing Israel, the biological children of Abraham, then you are going to be cursed. Either you bow down to them, you give them money, aid, whatever, that will make you blessed. Have you heard that? I have. And the whole time I was growing up, pretty much all of my life, I was the biggest Zionist in the universe. There is nobody who was a bigger Zionist than right here. Growing up, I grew up in the Bible Belt and we are all like Zionism, like yay Israel. And I was always about like Israel over everything, Israel over the United States. If it ever came down between Israel and the United States, I'm on Israel's side, blah, blah, blah. When I was in high school, I wrote for the school paper and pretty much every issue I'm talking about Israeli politics, Israel this, Israel that, we need to support Israel. Even some Jewish professors flew in to see me when I went to Oklahoma State University. Some of my stuff was translated into Hebrew and I was even uh, scouted out to work at a Jewish lobbying firm because Christians who support Israel are a hot commodity because we have an audience and... That's right. So I wrote the book and then I met Pastor John Hagee. Um, and uh, Pastor John Hagee, of course, if you write a book about Christian support for Israel in America, you have to write about Pastor John Hagee, and I did. Uh, but, but he approached me and said, boy, David, you know Washington, you know the Jewish community, you're Jewish, and you clearly understand us from, from your book, which I've read. Um, I've got this crazy idea. I'd like to create an, a pro-Israel Christian organization. Do you think you can help me? Wow. And um, I was leaving the Hill at the time, had offers to go lobby for big companies or join big lobbying firms. And I made the decision to go to Texas and be the first employee of a new organization called Christians United for Israel. Under your tenure, you built up Christians United for Israel to millions of members, right? I mean, I saw a need to, to broaden the base of support for Israel and broaden recognition of that base. And the evangelical community was the obvious way to do it. And everyone has evangelicals in their district, whether it's New York, LA, or every congressional district in between. Yeah, they want to put their politics before the Christian people. And because Israel has a secular government, the United States has a secular government, it is a really great way to bolster aid for a secular country by saying, hey, your Bible says that you have to support us, and if you don't, then you are going to be cursed. But that's not what the Bible says, because in 2010, August of 2010, my world came crashing down because I found out that my Zionist beliefs were not scripturally accurate, and literally, like, my world just imploded. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was standing in my parents' living room right by the stairs, and I'm, like, having a breakdown because, like, what? What? Like, Zionism isn't, like, God's will? Yeah. And so, you know, just for an example, when President Trump moved the embassy to Jerusalem, he later commented that he did it for the evangelicals. Yeah. That, not the Jewish community, the evangelicals. That would have been unheard of when we started Kufa in 2006. Tell us about that decision to go into politics. Well, I, uh, I moved to Las Vegas in 2015, Tuli, to, uh, to uh, work with Sheldon and Mary Madison in building an organization called the Maccabee Task Force. And the Maccabee Task Force focuses on fighting anti-Semitism and the demonization of Israel on college campuses. 
So I've been laser focused on college campuses for the last seven years.